Perfect, it's Karen Frankel here with you, getting you all drawing. While I was preparing for today's workshop or today's tutorial, I went back to have a look at some of the videos that I have been posting up over the last 18 months or so on YouTube because I had a suspicion that I might have done this one before. And while I haven't done exactly this one, which is how to make viewfinders, I have done a video on viewfinders and a video on thumbnails. That is a, a viewfinder. It's a piece of card with a hole cut in it with bits of string across. And now you might think, well, that's easy to do. Why do I need Karen to show me how to do that? Well, sometimes the things that can go wrong are, um, are good for somebody who's already done them wrong to show you not to do it. Um, and also, today I'm going to talk to you about the proportion. So what actual shape that you've got in there, although a viewfinder can be lots of different shapes. But we're going to launch into the standard um, shape to start off with. And the standard shape is more or less the, the shape of photographs when you get them printed out. Um, of course, we can print out photographs in any proportion nowadays. But in the olden days, number of years back before digital printing, we used to print photographs in a set size. Most of you know what a standard photograph looks like. The first thing I'm going to say about um, the viewfinder is to talk a little bit about the strings that are going across and you can also make viewfinders with um, pencil marks on it. I think you can't see that particularly well. It's a bit far from the camera. Why do we have those three columns and three rows? It comes from something called the rule of thirds and the rule of thirds comes from something called the golden ratio or the golden mean and in my video which is um, how to use a viewfinder I give you exactly what that is all about suffice to say for today's video that when we are finding a view, looking through our viewfinder to find a view, whether it's outside in the, in the open air, whether it's against a, um, something inside the house, a still life, or even if it's um, using it on a photograph, you can still use a viewfinder, okay? It is literally something to find a view. And generally, we use the, the rule of thirds so that we place our strong horizons on one of those third lines and our strong verticals on one of those vertical lines. The next thing I want to talk to you about is, of course, the size of that aperture and also the, the size of the whole thing can become a useful tool as well. You can make a viewfinder out of any bit of paper. You can make a viewfinder just with your fingers looking through your fingers. All a viewfinder does is it closes in your observation of what you're looking at so that you can um, not be overwhelmed by everything and you can choose a view that is going to suit your sketch. So, you can see I've just been tearing this piece of paper up. And you can actually decide to make a viewfinder that's any size or shape. You can have a square one so that it's not rectangular like that. You can make a long, thin one. So, I'm, as I'm talking to you, just making the most simple of simple. And I'm going to cut a mark, cut there and cut there, open it up, cut it out, and there we have a viewfinder. It, it really can be as simple as that. So you can see that the proportion of this shape here is very different to the proportion of that shape. 
it's longer and narrower absolutely you can make shapes like that you can look through anything and in fact what some people do is they get two L shapes and then you can make your shape long and thin you can make it small and square you can make it big and square you can make it standard rectangle you can change it just put a bit of blue tack there and you can change that shape that proportion to anything you like so it isn't a rule that you need to have the proportions that I'm going to talk to you about the reason I'm giving you the proportions for making this particular viewfinder is to work with that golden mean or the rule of thirds that we have come to understand as a very good traditional shape a traditional proportion to uh, use in our sketches and compositions until you get used to it and then you start playing around with things okay so the rule of thirds means that if we want to make a an easy to split up into thirds um, square aperture we can measure and I think this one is like that yep that is six by four so four isn't very diff very easy to divide into thirds but it's not uh, not too difficult these don't have to be exact these um, these lines we need something small enough so that when we push it right away from us, so if I push it away from the camera and you're looking at me, the, clo the further away you, it gets from your eye, the smaller the amount of things you can see and the closer it gets to your eye, the more you can see inside that viewfinder. So if your viewfinder is too big, like something like that, then there's not much point in it because you might be, have too much in it whereas when it's smaller you can bring it right close to your eye and you can see everything you need through it and then as you take it away you can see smaller images okay the first thing I'm going to find is a card now I prefer to make my viewfinders on a stiff piece of card rather than a piece of paper it's just a bit more resilient and if you want to keep this and use it over and over again then that is going to work better for you rather than um, this if you want to make L's make them out of a cardboard if you've received a Christmas card a birthday card that sort of thing it's that kind of card that we are talking about it's easier if you have a plain color but I guess you can have um, pattern on it. It really doesn't overly matter. It's just if you've got pattern on it, um, it may distract you from looking through. So I am simply going to cut that piece of card off. Most of us sketch in a sketchbook. And often the size of the sketchbook follows A5, A6, A4, A3, A2, all of those things. And they all have a set proportion. So A5 is half of your A4, and the proportion of that to that is the same as the proportion of that to that. So if you want to draw a sketch on your page, and you want to use the whole page, it is useful if your viewfinder is the same proportion as that okay so then you don't need to look through a square here and then draw a square on there although that is perfectly reasonable so the way I designed this and this is uh, what I'm going to show you is to make the outside of my viewfinder the same proportion as the inside of my viewfinder 
and both of them are the same proportion as this page. Now you don't need to know maths and you don't need to measure it and go how many times does that fit into that and all of those things. This is the clever trick. If you put a long ruler and it can just be a straight edge, it doesn't actually have to be a ruler with, with measurements on it, right? Anywhere along that, um, that diagonal, and I know it gets a bit complicated, so play this bit over and over again um, until you get it, or try it and then it will, um, uh, you'll understand it better. Anywhere along that diagonal is going to have the same proportion as this page. So I've put two red dots down, I don't know if you can even see them, I'll make them big there. So those red dots were on the diagonal of the page. Yes? Now I can just draw a square. I'm not using the ruler, obviously. Um, now that square that I've drawn is exactly the same proportion as that page. Now that's a bit big for a viewfinder. So... I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to use my viewfinder. If I put my ruler back there, watch what happens. Actually, I'll put it on top of. If I put it from corner to corner in the aperture, you can see the ruler going through from corner to corner. And can you see it's also going from corner to corner of the outside? So that if I use this aperture as my viewfinder, it will allow me to um, find a view that is going to fit on my page. And if you watch my other YouTube video, which I will also give you a link for, which is the thumbnail, using your viewfinder to find, uh, to draw a thumbnail plan, it's useful to have the border of this also the same proportion. You can see the rulers going all the way through so that when you draw your thumbnail I can't find my ordinary pencil how about that I can just trace around there and I know that I can put my thumbnail in there because it's the same proportion as my viewfinder and that is all the same proportion as my page but note that I put my viewfinder vertical like that and my page is horizontal so be careful about that when you transfer things come on I must have a pencil somewhere no, just another covered drawing uh, pen, uh, colored pencil okay so the proportion of that green shape is the same proportion as that and it's the same proportion as our viewfinder okay so now i'm taking my little bit of card and i am taking my ruler and i am going to move my card clearly this card is not the same proportion as this page because if i put that corner on there, that corner is not matching up. And I don't want to make it crooked. So I am going to mark this out so that the edges are parallel to my page. Can you see that straight down and that straight down? And it's, um, it's crossing over about there. So I know that I have to get rid of that bit. If this is all a bit much and you don't want to have it relative to your page then it actually doesn't matter okay so for those of you that wanted um, to get this the same size the same proportion my apologies as your sketchbook then you need to know that diagonal so now I'm going to take a metal ruler which is much safer and better to cut against and I am cutting on a cutting board 
Of course, at this stage, you can use the scissors. It really doesn't have to be that accurate. As I said, you can use just your fingers like that. And, you know, that's not a well-proportioned square. Now, I'm also going to now draw my inside aperture so that I can cut that out. Now, if you want to make it a standard um, two-thirds, um, have that be two-thirds and that be three-thirds, so one to two-thirds. Am I, am I talking sense? Sometimes I'm not too sure. Then, it is quite nice to have... Can you see how I'm putting my plastic, measuring my, my sit square, and I'm putting the corner on that diagonal. So if I go out six centimeters, I can divide that up really nicely. Okay? And I use my set square. So I'm using this because it's giving me a nice right angle. It also happens to be giving me those measurements, but they don't have to be exact. Okay? So as I showed you, I could just cut out pretty randomly out of that folded piece of paper. So it turns out that 4 is 2 thirds of 6. And it's exactly 4, inch, four centimeters there and 6 centimeters there. So you can see that the, the whole thing is um, got the same proportion. The aperture is the same, but the size, so the size and proportion are two different things. The size of this top viewfinder is actually smaller, but it is the same proportion because it is on those diagonals. So it really doesn't matter. It just has to be neat for you to hold in your hand. Okay. Now, to put these strings on, we need a mark to show us where the thirds are. And because this was six inches, we can just do the two. I have already done them on that side. So we need to know where it is on the card. So I'm actually going to put a little mark on the outside as well. On the outside edge and for our four centimeters it's about it's one and a third basically so you can if you want just estimate that's pretty close I don't know if you can see that where you are that's a bit better that's pretty close if you want to be more exact, you can go, okay, that's one centimeter and it's one, two, three millimeters, just over one, uh, three millimeters. And so it's really not crucial. Okay. And I'm going to put that across like that so that I know where it is on the other end. And you'll see why I want it on that end in a sec. Okay, now the cotton, I use a thin cotton to thread across. However, I don't use just the thin sewing cotton because I think that's just a little bit too flimsy, but you can uh, use whatever you want. This is, this is a very thin crochet cotton and um, I like it because I can actually see it, but it's not obscuring too much. It, it really isn't that important. I'm just cutting a little nick where the string is going to go. Don't try and deal with short pieces. It's really not worth the fiddling around. So I'm going to take this string and I'm going to push it into that little nook there 
look isn't the right word, I can't think of what it is. And you can see that it's caught that string. And I'm going to turn it over and cut it for now. So I'm not worried about sticking anything down just yet. Of course, have a little bit hanging over because we're going to stick it. And we carry on doing that. I'm not going to do them all because otherwise you'll be here forever. But I'll just show you going across. Of course, don't pull it so tight that it um, that it bends your your viewfinder. But you do want it. You don't want it loose like that either, because when you pick it up, it's all going to be too soft. And we'll cut those two. And there we have. So I've only just put two at the moment. Of course, you will put all of them in. I'm not going to worry about that. And you simply hold it down, or hold both of them down because you'll have two there, and stick it down. It's, as, it's, it's literally as simple as that. And we'll stick down um, all the sides. So what you end up with is a viewfinder with those two cotton um, threads, four cotton threads going vertically and horizontally so that you can find a view. Now, if you're not bothered with those cotton threads, I'm just going to take this one. Let's say I'm not bothering about those proportions. I can, if I want to, I can just go, okay, that's what I want my viewfinder to look like. So really, I know I went all out with measuring and all sorts of things, but you can quite literally just do this. You can even get a piece of cardboard and have a number of different proportions. So you can have a long thin one so that you can do a panorama. You know how you've got a panorama in your camera? You know that Instagram uses squares, so you want a square. And I've just cut myself out an aperture and not bothering with strings. I can go, okay, that's about a third. I think your third marks are worthwhile doing because when you use your viewfinder, you can at least imagine the continuation of these marks so you can put your horizon going across there and your vertical tree going across there for example let's pretend we're looking out at this person sitting there and i'm going to put the horizon on that third can you see that that's a little bit dark for you to see and i'm putting him on the vertical there. Um, so that's how you use your viewfinder that you've made. There's a simple one. There's a slightly more sophisticated one. I'm putting that little man underneath where those two lines intersect. And I've got a view for that. If I wanted to, I could put the tree trunk on that view and have the, the ground level at the back go across or that, that, uh, those tree branches going across. So using your viewfinder to find little compositions is a fantastic tool. Get drawing. Bye-bye.